Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Happy Sabbath. And we're pleased to hear that people enjoy our sacrament meeting, and we just want to thank you for watching. I'm going to ask Kyle if he'll invite the Spirit to be with us this Sabbath day. Over to you, Kyle. Dear Heavenly Father, we look forward so much to the Sabbath day that we may rein that we may renew the covenant that we have made with thee for your sacred bread and wine. We thank the Lord that we are able to be here with you this day and we ask that our beloved Saviour, Jesus Christ, will watch over you, will bless you and keep you from all harm and be safe. I say this in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carl. So all who watch this are invited to join us uh, to take the sacrament. Uh, all you need to do is prepare your emblems, the bread and the wine or water, whatever you use, uh, grape juice. Uh, everyone is welcome to join us on the Fellowship of Christ on our Sabbath morning, which is a Saturday Sabbath. Uh, the true Jewish uh, Sabbath. So Jesus would have uh, uphold this. So as we come today, I, I want you, as we, I shall say the first prayer. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So if you'd like to bow or kneel as we pray for the bread. And they did kneel down with the church and pray to the Father in the name of Christ, saying, O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandment, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. And again, as we kneel or bow, Whichever's comfortable for thee. Uh, Kyle will say the blessing on the wine. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to talk to you today about Jesus Christ. We are the Church of Jesus Christ in Christian Fellowship, or the Fellowship of Christ, 
Everything that we do revolves around him. The whole point of the organization is to fellowship in his name, to grow, help people and ourselves grow in his grace, and to learn from the various theologies that exist about him so that we can grow closer to Jesus Christ. In our statement of inclusion, in part it reads, We seek to be a diverse people of faith, sharing in our differences and perspectives on theologies, understandings, and interpretation of Scripture. We covenant to accept, respect, and love one another throughout our faith journeys. And I think that this is a very important part of what makes us unique and, and how we can help other people learn and grow. I have a lot of people that come to me and they'll say, I want to know your definition of the nature of God. I want to know the fellowship's definition of the nature of God. What is your theology? Teach it to me. And they get very frustrated because I say, well, I can give you my own personal opinions, but I want you to understand that they're not binding on the fellowship. And I would definitely want to hear yours because that's how we learn and grow. Well, they, they want to grow towards a definitive understanding. And my problem with that is that I'm, I'm going to I'm going to liken the the nature of God to to toast. Okay. What is toast? It's you put it bread in a toaster and you can it can be anywhere from light, very, very light to very, very dark. And then you can put butter, jam, all kinds of different things on it. So if the nature of God is toast, then what we do is we put something on it because really toast is just really, really dry bread, right? So you got to put it, something on it to make it palatable. You put butter on it to soften it up a bit and make it a little salty, a little sweet. But if you want it really sweet, you put some, some jam on it. If you want to add some protein, put some peanut butter. You also use honey. If you want it to be sweet, you can use cinnamon and sugar. There's all kinds of different things you can do to make it palatable. And the way that I see the nature of God is God is infinite. It's just like there's a, well, I guess there probably isn't an infinite number of ways to make toast, but there sure are a lot. There's a ton of different ways to explore and understand the nature of God. What makes all of them true is that God is real and has a nature. And so therefore, that is the toast, right? Because there is toast that you're going to, you're not just going to put butter on air. You've got to have something to put it on. And so because God is an infinite being and we as finite beings are trying to understand God, we add the butter, we add the honey, we add the peanut butter. And then if you add too much stuff, then you don't have any bread left. You got this big stack of jellies and jams and peanut butters and, and you can't even see the bread anymore. So basically God just gets lost in, in human, um, I don't see human understanding, human philosophy. Basically we turn God into us when, when we add too much. And so in my mind, God is more like the toast and then there's a small piece that just has butter. Then there's a small piece that's just part of it that has butter and jelly, butter and peanut butter, jelly and peanut butter, sugar, cinnamon, butter and cinnamon, butter and sugar and cinnamon, etc. All those things fit on there and they're each unique little pieces so that each of us, when we make our toast, we can take a bite and it's pleasurable to us. So we all find the theology, the understanding of God that works for us. And I believe exactly what it says in our statement of inclusion. If I believe something, and, and I'll talk about the vision I had when I, when I was in high school in a moment, but I, I have some very definitive ideas, and I have them because of my personal relationship with God. But I want to learn from others so I can better understand what I've been taught. So I can deepen my personal relationship. When I was in high school, and, and I talk about this, it's 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 on the website. I'll share a link in the description. I received a vision, and God showed me this these these waters. Basically, is what it looked like. These waters that went on for eternity, 
and he and the mother and the son got out on their own. So I saw God the Father and God the Mother get out, and they, they encouraged the son, but he was able to get out on his own. So if you've seen that uh, anti-Mormon God Makers video, it's got a cartoon in it where God has all these wives that are just having birthing babies. That's a ridiculous notion. It was obviously made up to make fun of the Brighamite Latter-day Saints. It's not, it's, what I saw was not like that. However, because I was a Brighamite at that time, I took that, that information I was given, I took that revelation, and I saw it from a Brighamite perspective. Because that's all I knew. After leaving their sect and exploring many other things, now I look at it from a different lens. Now I understand it. I don't know if I understand it better, but I understand it differently because I've grown. My understanding has grown. I've been introduced to new concepts. And I personally feel like I have a greater depth and a greater understanding than I did when I was in high school, which I would hope I would because I've been in high school for over 30 years now. And I, I genuinely believe that that's why the Lord wants us to be a fellowship. Because we don't learn in a vacuum. We can't just take one idea and set it on a shelf and then just, okay, well, we're going to make the toast darker or lighter and put more or less butter on it, but that's it, nothing else. We won't learn. We won't grow. When I hear things that, that I don't believe, I appreciate them because it helps deepen and strengthen the beliefs that I do have. When I hear something I didn't know before or I did but didn't understand and, and it feels right, I get to expand my beliefs. I get to deepen my relationship with God and understand a little bit better. And that's not something that can really happen to the depth that it has since I left an organized religion as it can in, as I like to call it, an unorganized religion. We're really able to learn from one another better. We just have to stop assuming that we know all things and that we're right and everyone else is wrong. And, and I will say, I've had people tell me, well, you know, you say that I can't have an infinite understanding of God. Well, I want you to know that I can. I have an infinite mind, and so therefore I can know all things too. And if that's true, that's great. But you're not going to be able to teach it to anybody like myself that has still has a finite mind. So the rest of us still need to learn and grow. So we'd appreciate it if you would come down to our level when you're talking to us, because we're not there yet. So lastly here, I, I want to say that if there has to be a line in the sand, it is this. We are the church of Jesus Christ in Christian fellowship. We are the fellowship of Christ. And so the one place where I draw the line in the sand is to say that Jesus is not a Christ. You're not going to have, you know, the church of Bob Christ. I don't know. Because Jesus is special. I personally believe that the Bible is true. And so because of that, I believe it when it says in John chapter 1 that Jesus created this world. I, you know, I, I, that's one of the things from the Brighamite tradition I took with me. In their temples, the father Elohim says the son, Jehovah and Michael, go down and create a space. And so he says, let's go down. And they do. I believe Jesus created this. I, I don't believe that that Jesus created me, you know, the way my mom and dad obviously did. You know, my mom gave birth to me. I think he created me the same way that the father and the mother created our spirits. He held out his hand and he, he helped me get to this physical body. And through his grace and atonement, I will live forever as a rector, as a resurrected being. And so will you. I don't believe that there is anyone else that can provide us this type of atonement. I don't believe that there, that we can do it on our own or we can do it for ourselves. I believe that Jesus is the Christ and not a Christ. And so that's my line in the sand. And that would, in, in my mind, if, if you have to have a definitive theology for the fellowship on Jesus Christ, it is that it is Jesus the Christ and not Jesus a Christ. And you can interpret that however you want, but we can't be a fellowship of Christ if we're not looking to Jesus as the Messiah, as our Savior, 
as the person that is the advocate between us and the father and mother. Now, that's not to say that those that don't see things that way can't work with us or be a part of the fellowship or learn from us or us learn from them because that's the whole point of a fellowship is for us to learn from one another. My only thing is that if you're going to speak on behalf of the fellowship and you start saying that Jesus is a Christ, then you know that's when someone's going to have to say, hey, that's a, that's a personal interpretation. That, that definitely isn't what we as a fellowship believe. You, you can't say that and claim to be speaking for everyone. Now, I do have some very definitive, carved into the rock beliefs on this. Because as a special witness of Christ, I can tell you that he is real. He's not something that someone made up. He's not an idea or a philosophy or a way of teaching ideas or philosophy, philosophies. Jesus is a real being that actually exists. And if you don't know that, I would invite you to discover it because I want you to know that I know it and that you can know it too. I'm not special. There's no reason why you can't build your own personal relationship with Jesus the Christ. So I just want to bear you my testimony that Jesus is the Christ, that God is real, and that regardless of what your own personal theologies are, we have room for you here, and we want to learn from you. So that's my Thursday thought, and I'll leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I invite people to uh, who don't know Christ, if they need to know more and have watched our video, just get in contact with uh, the Church of Jesus Christ and Christian Fellowship. And uh, yeah, just get in contact with us and, and we can tell you more about our Saviour Jesus Christ, who we, who we follow. And if you read the Bible, you can learn about him and uh, you can get to know how he was. So as we come to an end of our Sabbath service, uh, I will close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we can take the sacrament. And I ask that your spirit is with us for the rest of the week. Uh, Carl's birthday on Monday. And I go to hospital as well, Lord. So we pray that you can heal my... We don't know if it's cancer or not, but we, are, we ask that you will heal that, Lord. Anybody else that's going through the same situation, Lord, give them healing power and, and be okay. So we ask that your spirit be with us all week. And I say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.